now the question is, what does Jim Harbaugh need to do to touch the Chargers and turn them to gold? Well, the, the, the obvious answer, the one answer to it all is establish a running game, balance the offense. As we've seen since Stanford, Jim Harbaugh has restored so many teams and establish them on a national scale into being a great team. And what does he do every season? Well, he runs the ball. Every team, every year, doesn't matter the talent, doesn't matter who's behind as a signal caller or what fancy wide receivers or tight ends you have. He establishes a run. That's the first order of business. Always, it's always been as always will be. Stanford and Toby Gerhardt. 49ers, Frank Gore, Michigan, you name a running back, Chris Evans, Zach Charbonnet, Blake Corum, Hassan Haskins, Donovan Edwards. He's established the run. He had a one-two punch at running back too, but he established the run. What have the Chargers forgotten about? The run. Why? Because the game's changing. The NFL's different, right? It's becoming more of a passing game. The best teams that Teams that do well, they can throw the ball. Let me have you hold that thought. Let's think about this. Let's let it marinate. Let's think about the who's in the conference championships right now. The Chiefs, right? The Ravens, the Lions, the 49ers. And what do they all have in common? It's not quarterback. Brock Purdy is not Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson is not Jared Goff. It's not defense. It's a running back. It's a running game. The Ravens have one of the the greatest running rushing quarterback ever. Great passing quarterback, but phenomenal running like running quarterback. He's unreal. Lamar Jackson, Gus Edwards, he's been doing well. Right, Dalvin Cook, he looks like he's coming out of his shell right now. The Chiefs, what do the Chiefs have? Isaiah Pacheco, great running back. 49ers, Christian McCaffrey, the best running back in the league. The Lions. David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, the best one-two punch at running back in the entire NFL. It's about running, right? Yeah, passing is cool and maybe it's becoming more relevant, but it's still a running game. You need running backs. You need players to run the run the ball. All right? You, you need the Seahawks to run the ball. And what have the Chargers been, a, been an, unable to do in the four seasons that Herbert's been there? Run the ball. Is it by choice or is it by force of hand? I'll leave that up to you. Is Austin Eckler a great running back? No. Should they have ran the ball more often? Yeah. I think it's a double issue in my eyes. It's a one-two punch. They, they didn't have a great running game, and they also weren't trying to run the ball that often either. But step one, and honestly the only step, is establish a running game because – it's going to help the three biggest issues. It's going to help in sacks. It's going to help in pass attempts. And it's going to help have a balanced offense. In 17 seasons that Jim Harbaugh has coached since 2007 when he joined Stanford, in 14 of those seasons, he's had a 1,000-yard rusher. In 14 of those seasons, he had players combined for running over 1,250 yards. In 12 of those seasons, he had players combined for running for over 1,500 yards. And keep in mind, college football, less games. When you coach the 49ers, less games. 16 games for the 49ers, 17 games now in the new NFL. And he still ran the ball more effectively in a longer period of time than Chargers could ever do in this four-year period of time. They never had a 1,000-yard rusher in Herbert's four seasons there. They had two players combined for a total of 1,000 yards rushing or more three out of those four seasons. Only one time had they had a running back and or two running backs combined for over 1,250 yards or more, and that was 1,275. They never had a running game. They never did, and that that's going to hurt your team a lot. Because it makes your team very predictable. 
Well, if they're not rushing the ball, they choose not to, or they just have really bad running backs, what are we going to do? We're going to prepare for the pass. Every play, we're going to practice like it's a pass play. We're going to drop back our secondary. We're going to lock down Keon Allen. We're going to lock down Joshua Palmer, and we're going to bring the heat onto Herbert. And it worked. The Chargers have been terrible in these four seasons that Herbert has been there. They've been a dismal and effective. Can't win in playoff games. Can't even make the playoffs. Had the fifth worst record in the NFL this season with 13 games of Herbert played. Pretty telling sign. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe the eye test and the record and what it's stating, let me show you some numbers of how a poor balanced offense leads to losses and leads to predictability. Well, it's easy to prepare for the pass when, yeah, A, you have running backs who are terrible and can't get yardage. B, it leads to more pressure on the quarterback when he is passing the ball. In the four seasons that Herbert and the Chargers have had Brandon Stanley at quarterback, or excuse me, head coach, the Chargers ranked top 10 in most sacks allowed each season except for one, where they ranked 18th but still allowed 31 sacks. So in 2020, 34 sacks. 2021, 31. 2022, 42. 2023, 43. And again, that's a sign of just a bad, a poor balanced offense. It's not a sign of a, a bad offensive line because their offensive line is top 10. It's been top 10 for at least the past two seasons. And they still allow that many sacks because it, there was no balance. If you, don't, if you don't believe the sack total, if you don't believe the record, if you don't believe the running numbers, well, let me just show you, read you one more thing that shows the lack of a balanced offense. If I can find my numbers. I know them, but I want to read you these numbers because they're pretty extraordinary. In 2020, the Chargers ranked fourth in pass attempts per game at 595, second at 672 in 2021, second in 2022 with 699, and in 2023, Justin Herbert was on pace to rank fourth in pass attempts at 597. The numbers tell you what's going on. They tell you how easy it is to stop or to just stop this team because there's no balance to it. And Harbaugh is going to be able to bring balance. He's brought balance to Stanford, San Francisco, Michigan. And if the rushing numbers don't tell you that, let me tell you one more fact. In Herbert's four seasons at the Chargers, his lowest number of pass attempts per game was 35.8. Then it was 40, 40, 41. In 17 seasons that Harbaugh's coached since 2007 at Stanford, not a single player, not a single quarterback averaged more than 29 pass attempts per game. That was the most, 29. Herbert, at the least, was 35. They never even reached 30 under Harbaugh. They had 29. And you could say, well, who did they have a quarterback? J.J. McCarthy. Going to be a first, second round pick. Andrew Luck. I mean, Heisman runner-up in 2010. And he passed the ball less than 30 times per game. It's going to be a balanced offense. And it's going to work. Because Harbaugh doesn't care who is a signal caller. All he cares about is winning. Because he knows what it takes to win. And it starts with establishing the run. Having a balanced offense. And the last thing I want to state about why I think this was a good move by the Chargers is because they will give, not the Bill Belichick treatment of, hey, you're going to be GM and head coach because, as we've seen, it doesn't really work out too well when your head coach is your GM. But they understand Harbaugh knows what it takes to be good in football, so they'll help give him the reins. And what do I mean by that? There are a lot of moves coming for the Los Angeles Chargers. Entering free agency, they're negative $30 million underneath the salary cap. So they need to get above that threshold if they want to make any moves, have flexibility, and free agency, trades, they have to make moves. And therefore, there's going to be a lot of big name players departing from the team to create cap space. The likes of Joey Boza, Khalil Mack, Mike Williams, potentially Keenan Allen, Eric Kendricks, big name players, starting players, top of the line players that will most likely 
have to be moved off of on moved off on to create some space. And the Chargers understand this, and they know that Harbaugh knows how to build a team. So why bring a GM in that might butt heads with Harbaugh? You want to have good give and take, obviously, but you want, you don't want to have two immovable forces. We know Harbaugh is willing to give and take, right? But you don't want to have it be a big war breaking out between the GM and the coach. Like, you don't want that to happen to any franchise. So the Chargers recognize this, and they are looking at GMs now, and they have been before Harbaugh was hired, especially now, that have a good relation with Harbaugh, whether that's a working relationship, like they know each other from previously being in a team together, or maybe somehow Harbaugh got connected to somebody and they just kind of spoke and they have a good relationship before entering the Chargers. But you want to have compatibility with the GM and the head coach, especially with these big moves on the way. So although Harbaugh is not the GM and the head coach like a Bill Belichick, he still will have a say to the GM and have good give and take and good back and forth because whoever this GM will be is going to have some sort of a good foundation relationship with Jim Harbaugh entering the position. Overall, home run hire by the Los Angeles Chargers.